Well guys, an interesting acquisition was made by Tesla on the DL, and the news has come out over the last 24 hours, and I wanna talk about this acquisition and why Tesla likely made this move. Hope you enjoy this as always. Make sure to smash that thumbs up button, and let's start getting into this. So just to give you a refresher, Tesla's bought a couple companies in the past like nine to 12 months. They've been on kind of like a little buying spree of some smaller companies that have some huge potential to change their markets they're in, okay? So Tesla, if you don't remember, back in February, they bought a company named Maxwell Technology. They're talking about they could eventually nearly triple battery energy density on the long term, okay? Ba dry battery electrodes. It's unbelievable. And this was a deal that Tesla basically paid them $218 million in an all stock deal, all right? The Maxwell Dry Battery Electro Technology could increase battery energy density by 50% and eventually could nearly triple energy density from the current levels. The technology could also lower the cost of batteries by 10% to 20% and double the life of batteries. And so with a move like that, that's a big move for Tesla, not a big move in terms of the dollar amount, right? $218 million in a stock deal. It wasn't like Tesla had to take cash off the balance sheet. But when you think about this, could bring down costs, the batteries could potentially go a lot further, and they could last a lot longer. Like if this is something that works out, that, that's, that $218 million is a joke that Tesla paid, right? And it, it's kind of similar to like, you know, sometimes there's some phenomenal deals done. We'll have to see if this shakes out like that. But remember when Facebook bought Instagram for a billion dollars back in the day, everybody thought that number was huge, right? Instagram's now worth 100 billion plus dollars. YouTube was bought by Google about a year or two after it had been founded. And Google bought them out for like 1.65 billion. And at that time, people were like, what? YouTube, this, this little you know service that some people go watch cat videos on and like funny videos on, it just got sold for 1.65 billion. YouTube's probably worth anywhere between 150 and 200 billion dollars today. Maybe this is a type of acquisition that could you know be a game changer for Tesla in the future. We'll have to see how all that shakes out. But that was a big acquisition, okay? Then we just covered this one last week. This was an, an acquisition that just happened within the past week or so. But Tesla bought a company named DeepScale. And this is a company that is supposed to help them with self-driving vehicles, robo-taxis, all those sorts of things. The huge opportunity that Tesla is going after there. And we know Elon Musk wants an autonomous taxi network very, very soon. And this is a company that is supposed to help them get there. And so we see it's been a busy season for Tesla when it comes to acquiring companies. But now they just bought another Another one, a very small one that not a lot of people even realize, okay? Tesla acquires battery expert in bid to make its own cells. Tesla appears to be pushing forward with plans to make its own battery cells. Electric Autonomy has discovered that Tesla quietly acquired High Bar Systems, a Canadian company with expertise in automated battery manufacturing for electric vehicles. So this one is around battery manufacturing, okay? So something very important there, a little different than the Maxwell acquisition, which you're talking about that. That is something that, you know, they could potentially make the batteries far cheaper and be able to get a lot more from those batteries when it comes to Maxwell. This one has to do with more manufacturing process of actually these batteries. And when you think of Tesla, the scale they're trying to get to, they're gonna need to build, you know, mass amounts of batteries. I mean, imagine if you're producing a million electric cars a year or two million electric cars, which Tesla should hit those type of numbers very, very soon in the next few years. When you're tight, talking about those type of numbers, you need to be you know, producing ridiculous amounts of batteries because the amount of cells that go into an electric car, it's off the charts, okay? So this is very, very interesting. An automated battery manufacturing for electric vehicles, laptops, and similar products. Now, obviously, you know, when it comes to Tesla, they're gonna be interested in this when it comes to electric vehicles, all right? It was recently working on a high-speed lithium-ion battery production system. It's not certain when the purchase took place, but but Tesla only listed Highbar as a subsidiary on October 2nd, and Highbar stripped its website down to a single page sometime after September 16th. So it sounds like this deal could have went through sometime in, in early September. And if you're wondering why didn't like why wasn't this like a huge news story if the deal happened, let's say in the beginning of September or the middle of September, or something like that? Well, when it's a very small acquisition, like like this is a very small acquisition, you actually don't even have to publicly disclose it, even if you are public 
public, a public company like Tesla. For a little bigger deal like the Maxwell, when you're talking about $218 million, you do have to disclose something like that because it's such a big number. But when you're talking about a really, really small deal like this, you don't have to do it. Apple acquires companies all the time. People think Apple never buys companies. Apple buys very small tech companies and startups all the time. People just don't realize it because Apple doesn't have to disclose it. It's only like when Apple bought Beats, like you had to actually disclose it because it's a big deal. And same exact thing with Tesla and all public companies. If it's really small, you don't even have to say anything if you don't want, okay? The high bar deal still says a lot about Tesla's strategy. It suggests the company is hoping to fast track the production of battery cells by snapping up multiple teams. Although Tesla isn't about to kick out suppliers like Panasonic and LG Chemicals anytime soon, it likely needs them to step up with demand. It clearly wants to take greater control of its density as soon as possible. And then the article gets a little fun here. It says it might have to with fresh competition from Porsche and others. Oh gosh, that's a little funny. But if you look at this, there are two things that are as clear as day that Tesla is very, very interested in. And not only is Tesla the internal teams pushing for this, but you can clearly see Elon Musk and the Tesla executive team are looking for you know small companies to acquire that can help them achieve these two things, okay? The first one is obviously has to do with self-driving. So a Tesla right now, a Tesla right now here today, as I'm recording this video, all right, a Tesla today here in October 2019 can do 90 to 95% of the driving for you and do it in a very safe manner and a very good manner. 90 to 95% of the driving, but that last five to 10% is what Tesla's trying to get to. And they're gonna do whatever it takes to get there, and Elon Musk would love to get there over the next year or two, where the car can do 100% of driving, and uh, you know it's far safer than a human. So if we could get there, I mean, that's just a massive, massive opportunity, because then you're talking about, you can fast track autonomous taxi networks and all those sorts of things. So that's a huge potential, and you can see with a deal like Deep Scale, that is to get that last five to 10% of driving, that's what Tesla wants to achieve, okay? That's the first thing that's clear as day, Tesla's trying to achieve right now. It's a massive opportunity. And the second thing is obviously around batteries with a deal like the Maxwell deal, as well as what uh, you know Tesla has been doing internally. And then you see a deal like this with high bar. It is clear as day that Tesla needs to bring down cost of batteries so these cars can be far more profitable, but not just bring down costs, be able to get more bang out of those batteries so they can go for even longer distances and get the manufacturing process to even a simpler stage. So what, what, what does that end up meaning? The, the, the cars are made more profitably at the end of the day. And if you look at you know a lot of the data we're looking at out there, you know the, the cost of batteries in electric vehicles should continue to fall as you look at a chart like this. And over the next five years, it's gonna get really fun as far as the cost of batteries. And meanwhile, you have internal combustion engines in cars are usually going up in price and you have battery costs of cars continuing to go down. And this is another huge thing for electric vehicles and another reason why electric vehicles are the future, not just because a lot of us want to drive electric vehicles and once you've driven an electric vehicle you're like whoa this is a way better experience but it's also from the fact that internal combustion engines are getting more expensive so those vehicles will continue to get more expensive while electric vehicles will be able to start being made profitably now and at, at a scale where as the scale gets bigger and bigger the cost will continue to climb down and as you have somebody like Tesla that's looking into all these things and they're going to figure out a lot more things in relation to how to make these batteries even faster how to get more out of these batteries and how to do it in a cheaper manner when you look at all that battery costs will continue to decline and that's going to be a whole scale flip there because then you might even start being able to have electric vehicles start to be sold that are in the 20s of thousands of dollars rather than 30s and up as of pretty much right now right uh, and then you're talking about if you could have a self-driving vehicle electric vehicle all in one and let's say that vehicle sold at a $35,000 price point a $40,000 price point that vehicle might even be able to be made very profitable because the battery cost continues to decline. And remember, it wasn't that long ago that, that you know, a battery cost for you know, a Tesla was $15,000 plus. That's what it used to be for Tesla. And now it's somewhere around $5,000-ish. That should get down to maybe even $4,000, maybe even $3,000 if you're looking at a little more of a long-term perspective. So those are the two things Tesla's focused on. That's why they acquired High Bar. They want to continue to get batteries to a state where they can mass produce them in a cheaper quantity and you know make these batteries profitable and at the same time be able to get more bang out of them so these these can go even further because Tesla wants to have all vehicles be able to go 400 plus miles in range in the future if you can get 400 plus miles of range of Tesla's in the future um, there's really no there's no need
need it all to buy an ICE vehicle at that point in time because there's no like range, you know, oh, I'm scared of like being able to go here and go there and go there. No, if you have 400 plus miles of range, you can go anywhere you want and do it. And then you talked about the supercharger network on top of that. That's just a whole extra thing. So that's why Tesla went ahead and acquired High Bar. I would love to hear your guys' opinion on this acquisition from Tesla down there in the comment section. Do you think Elon Musk and the executive management team over that Tesla made a good decision with this? And do you have any intel that maybe I didn't cover in this video around this acquisition of High Bar? Let me know in the comment section. As always, make sure you smash the thumbs up button. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.